www.cork.ie.com Now, the much-anticipated July stimulus package will be announced in the next couple of weeks. And this morning, Deloitte is giving its two cents on what should be in the package with a special focus on family business. Well, joining me now for more on this is Deloitte Ireland tax partner and vice chairman, Parik Crone. And good morning, Parik. Good morning, Gavin. Good to be here. So you guys take the view that family businesses are different, that they have unique characteristics. Just expand on that for me. What is it that makes them worth singling out in this way? Well, at a broad level, it's important to realise that globally, family businesses make up actually 80 to 90 percent of all businesses. And in an Irish context, um, when you extrapolate out what is the SME sector, which effectively comprises, for the most part, family businesses, that accounts for over 70 percent of our workforce. So from that point of view, it's really, 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 really important. And Anna has already been flagged that July stimulus will focus primarily on that segment. And I suppose they have different characteristics that are worth um, highlighting in the sense that what underpins a family business is family values and, and that sense of purpose beyond being profitable, which has been with family businesses over generations, it is now seen as something that can create a, a higher level of trust in the brand, trust with their people, their employees, and trust that there's a future. Which is so. Therefore, for for those reasons, it's very important. The government stays the course, and more generally, you know, family businesses in an Irish context play a really key role in local communities, creating that sense of belonging that is very important, particularly in rural Ireland, and 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 that's really important from the point of view of our social fabric and also our tourism product, which predominantly is obviously in Dublin and and the larger cities, but it's also is, is a rural product for. Yeah. So for those reasons, it's really, really important that, that, that the state um, effectively co-invests with these family businesses um, to get them through this over the next number of years. Yeah, and indeed, I mean, the, the, the whole point about family values and community is an interesting one. And we have seen that during this pandemic. I think that those companies that have kind of maybe looked beyond profit a little bit and gone the extra mile to help out uh, during the COVID-19 crisis will definitely be remembered for it. Uh, O'Neill's, the, the clothing manufacturers, is one that stands out in that, in that regard. Now, you're bringing forward a, a series of measures that you think should be brought in, Parag, to help family businesses. And I, I just want to highlight one here, which is the expansion of the tax-free voucher scheme, uh, which I think is quite interesting. Now, just tell us what this scheme is first, and then tell us what changes you think should be made. Yeah, cu- currently, employers have the ability to give tax-free vouchers every year to their employees of up to €500 Euro tax-free, um, and those vouchers can broadly be spent on, 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 any, on anything. Um, what we're proposing is that that limit of €500 Euro is is increased on a one-time only basis for 2020 and 2021 to 5,000 to effectively encourage employers and employees indeed to then spend that voucher, which is now effectively tax-free, so it's, it's five, up to 5,000 into their, into their pocket on local goods and services. Because a, a key aspect, a key aspect to getting us all out of this crisis is not just funding the businesses, it's not just funding the businesses, it's creating consumer confidence and creating that sense, an environment whereby consumers will spend in the local economy. Um, and, you know, other small countries like Hong Kong have, 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 have introduced, introduced voucher limits of up to 10,000 per citizen. So this isn't a unique suggestion. This is simply one which is designed to really encourage that consumer confidence piece, which is probably still fragile out there in terms of the the research we're doing amongst our client base and more broadly. The consumer confidence piece is the last piece in the jigsaw that's required here. You could put a huge amount of funding into businesses, um, uh, which we've flagged also in our submission as as of others. But ultimately, ultimately, it's about creating consumer demand in our local economy to drive that. that, And confidence is key in that. Yeah, all all that extra investment is no good if you don't have any customers. Um, Now, you're launching a new series of of articles and insights, I suppose, called The Resilient Family Enterprise, and it discusses some of the the unique challenges that that these companies face. Um, One thing I wanted to ask you about is how do you recommend people keep business and personal relationships separate uh, within their family company? Because that can be a difficulty, can't it? Absolutely. Look, we're all human. Um, blood is, is thicker than water. And, and I suppose in our experience, there, there, there's, there's a, just in terms of lessons learned, you, you, you know, you, you have to keep an eye on, on the business. So, so having, having a, a business first approach whilst recognizing family. And, and a few 
simple observations I would make is, you know, keep an open and clear line of communication with, with your siblings. Be logical, not emotional. Reward competence, not genetics. Be fair, not biased. Take time for each other outside of the office. That's really important to get to know each other, particularly amongst cousins who might know each other as much, uh, you know, in terms of up, up, for, for up the family tree. And in terms of lessons learned, I guess a key point is really to make sure that the rules of the road of the family and the business are codified at an early stage. The last thing you want to do is introducing a rule about not having an in-law being able to come into the business after the in-law has arrived. It's better oh, yeah. that the family decides what the rules are with regards to, for example, in-laws before that situation yeah. arises because but, it, it takes it takes the, the tension out of the situation. Yeah, I, I think that clarity of expectation is very important and I suppose it leads me on to the last question I have for you, Parik, which is about handing the business over to the next generation because that's certainly an area that, that can often cause problems. What would be your recommendation there? Look, again, that's an area where the, the, fa- the family constitution or the rules of the road for the family ha- have a key role. Um, look, it, you know, in some countries, the, the, the so-called CEO succession, which is, which is matched with the patriarch or matriarch, mightn't happen until somebody's in their 70s or 80s. Um, it, it's starting to more now maybe in, in people's 60s or sometimes sooner if, if somebody wants to make a, a lifestyle change. The key is that there has to be an open and transparent process. And that's where in, in a number of family businesses that we advise we see the role of a non-executive director playing that kind of independent arbiter as to, well, actually, is it time for a non-family member to become CEO, for example, or is there capability within the family? And, and moreover, in terms of CEO succession, that's not something you, dis- you start thinking about uh, two years before the, the likely event, because you have to think of contingency planning in terms of somebody passing away early or indeed other circumstances. Okay. So really, CEO succession is about building a talent pipeline through the organization at all levels. So you're not just thinking about CEO succession, you're talking about succession at all levels within the management to team. Deloitte Ireland, tax part. Oh, sorry, sorry, Parik, I interrupted you there. That's actually all we have time for, so I'm going to let you go. But thanks very much for that. Those tips are very, very helpful. That's Deloitte Ireland tax partner and vice chairman, Parik Cronin. We'll be back in just a moment with a look. We'll be back in just a moment with a look. We'll be back in just a moment with a look. We'll be back in just a moment with a look. We'll be back in just a moment.